everyone, it's Christine. Welcome to Parenting Even New, or welcome back if you're not. So today we are going to talk about antiques. This is my antique collection video. These are not all the antiques that I own, but these are some of the antiques that I own. A lot of antiques are packed away because I have a lot of Halloween antiques and I have a lot of Christmas antiques and I can't show you all of those. Well, I mean I could, but I really don't feel like digging through everything right now. Especially Christmas stuff. Halloween stuff I really wouldn't mind because I'm going to go bring out Halloween stuff anyway soon. But Christmas decorations, I, I'm i not doing that. <laughs> I do have a lot of those. I have probably more Christmas antique items. I think they're easier to find and I've had um, more handed down to me. Halloween antique items are a little bit harder to find in my opinion. Alright, so let's start off with my absolute favorite thing that I own. This is very near and dear to my heart. This is my teddy. My grandfather gave him to me when I was a baby. So I've had him for almost 30 years, but my grandfather had him for 15 to 20 years before that. So this teddy bear is um, probably almost 50 years old. He's incredibly beat up. My dog, Bingo, bit his face off. And my mom had to re-sew him, and I cried even more after she did that. But I learned to love him anyway. He has his old tag here, but it's never had words on here since I've owned him. I mean, maybe when I was a baby baby, he might have, but I will never get rid of him. He is my favorite thing. Like, if I had a fire and I could only... Aside from like pictures, if I could only take one other personal item, I'd bring Teddy. He means everything to me. Let's move on to my infamous haunted collection. So these were my family's. These two guys. So I have Jimmy Cricket. I have Pinocchio. Pinocchio was definitely broken and glued back together by somebody. I added Geppetto to my collection. And if you have been here for a little while, you would know I have had quite the experiences after getting Geppetto. Like immediately when he came into the mail, some things went down. <laughs> so um, yeah, I have lots of videos on that. I'll link them in the description if you're curious. One of my favorite things are vintage books. This one was actually my grandfather's. So this is a child's garden of verses. This is all about gardens. So this one is from the 1930s, I believe. And it says, price 50 cents per volume. J.H. Sears and Company, Inc. I don't know if you guys can see that. J.H. Sears and Company, Inc. This is what the book looks like. And so the poems in here are A Child's Garden of Verses, The Child Alone, Garden Days, and Boys, Underwoods, books one through I-N. Underwoods, English, Underwoods, Scots. The Song of Rahiro. I don't think I said that right. The Feast of Femin, something I'm not going to pronounce. Heather Owl and Christmas at Sea. And then there's this illustration. There aren't any illustrations throughout the book. It's just simply poetry. But I love this. I love that it was my grandfather's. This is the other book I have. It's Tales from Shakespeare. It's illustrated. Um, this is super hard to figure out the year from because it doesn't have the year that it was published. However, um, on the inside it says Tales from Shakespeare by Charles and Mary Lamb. So I was able to research it a bit. And the first publication of this was in 1807. There were a lot after this. But judging by the illustrations, the coloring, and things like that, I do feel like it is from the 1800s. So there are several plays in here by Shakespeare. And they are, they have illustrations. 
This is a really cool one to have. I really like that one. Let's move on to some jewelry pieces. So I have this ring, which I actually was going to sell, and then I just don't know if I can. It is so beautiful. It needs to be resized a little bit. It's a little tight. My fingers swell. 10 karat white gold. It has this really beautiful pink stone. And then the um, little stones on the side are costume jewelry. No one can tell me what this pink stone is. I took this to so many jewelers and no one can tell me. They have absolutely no idea what stone this is. I have this bracelet and it has, it's from Paris and it has different um, touristy places like the Eiffel Tower and such on here. Lacey, stop looking. Then I have this ring. This ring is a very cool ring because, let me just It's just not focusing. <laughs> but this ring is a Victorian era ring. So it's um, it's actually my birthstone. It's garnets and then on the sides it is um, pearls but it's missing a pearl. And again I think this is 10 karat. It is. It's 10 karat gold. It's Victorian era. Isn't that Awesome. It needs to be resized because it doesn't fit me. It's like a five and a half, I think. We have another bracelet that is a little bit broken and just needs another little clasp here, but this is another one from Paris. I also have Tilly the Timer, which I forgot to put in this video. How I forgot to talk about certain jewelry pieces is literally beyond me. I mean, these are some of my favorite pieces too, and I didn't even mention them don't know how but this one is from I would say I think the 50s I actually called my mom because this was given to me by my grandmother when I was a teenager this is a turquoise cuff bracelet and these bracelets came back in style when I was in high school and it was like a big style trend and I had a true vintage one which was really cool because a lot of the ones that people had weren't vintage and uh my mom said she actually thinks my grandmother might have made this one which i didn't know okay, this is a ring from 1927 if i can get that on there yep yeah. it is a school ring it is one of my great great uncles i think it's my uncle joe's um this fits me not on this finger but it does fit me and i do wear it quite a bit but it does irritate my skin a little bit because it's kind of heavy so sometimes it bothers me and I can't wear it on a daily basis but I do wear it kind of often and um I love this piece it means a lot this was something my mom gave me as well this is my grandmother's wedding ring this is from the 50s and as you can see this has some stars engraved this is 24 karat gold oh this ring, I don't think I said it, but it's from Clarksville, Virginia, which the high school that he went to is no longer around. I think this belonged to my great grandmother. This is a 10 karat gold real pearl ring, and this is my favorite ring that I own. It is beautiful. So on my wedding day, my Mom gave me this ring for my something borrowed and I borrowed so that weird and I was so excited and then when I went to give it back to her she actually told me she wanted me to have it and I was incredibly excited so to this day one of my favorite pieces I own it is a bit heavy and I can't wear this ring every day either because it does irritate me because it is heavy but it's beautiful this ring I am not sure exactly who it belonged to and I don't know the time period for it. It was maybe the 40s. It is a real gold ring with a very very 
tiny diamond if you can focus. That was lazy. It's barely focusing. But I really like this ring. I think it's very pretty. I do have a few other, um, sorry, I have dog hair, like, all over my bed. I have a dog, you know. I do have a few vintage necklaces. Necklaces. Why can't I talk? But this is my favorite. This is pearls, obviously. So when I was young, my grandma gave me pearls. And, um, my mom had a set. And then my mom's was stolen and she was so upset so I gave her Mayan and when they were cleaning out my grandparents house they actually found another set of real pearls and they gave me these because I gave my mom my pearls and I was very, very excited because pearls are my favorite piece of jewelry. I just think they're beautiful. This is something my grandmother actually made. It's such a pretty bracelet. Um, my grandmother used to make jewelry. So I have this one and a few other pieces that she's made. This bracelet is one of my favorite pieces that she made. So pretty. We have this costume jewelry. Look how pretty that is though. It like really sparkles. My hair is all over the place. <laughs> she made this one. My grandmother. Um, let's see. I think that she made... Yeah, she made this one. And this one as well. So we have that. That's pretty too, right? Look at that. Kind of like a choker, actually. That's so pretty. One's blue and white. Whereas the other one was just all blue. Again, it's a choker. So pretty. I have this. Oh. I'm old. Because I just had a shooting pain in my back. So I have this really beautiful box. This is beautiful. And it's velvet on the inside. This is pretty freaking cool. Are you ready for this? I can't make it out. I don't know. Best wishes, Reggie Jackson. Nice, huh? So this is from Acme Rodeo of 1978. Pretty awesome. This is one of the newer vintage items that I have, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. Alright, so this is other than my teddy. This is my other favorite thing, and then one other thing is my favorite. So like top three, Teddy and this sign. This was my grandfather's grandmother's sign. She was an entrepreneur, and she did dressmaking. It was one of her many professions. And I think this sign is so amazing. I love it. This is from 1930s, probably. Pretty cool, huh? Like this is. He told me I could have this one day, and um, when they were cleaning out my grandparents' house, I couldn't be there, and I called up my stepdad I told him this is extremely, extremely important. Go down in the basement, go to the back of the basement, there is a sign that says Miss Johnson dressmaking, I need you to unscrew that and bring it to me, it is extremely important, we do not forget the sign. And they did it. <laughs> this is the third thing that is very important to me and this is something that I take with me when I'm depressed or I'm nervous and I need to feel close to my grandfather. I have his dog tags. He was in the Korean War. Okay so this is really cool and really creepy at the same time. So I have lots of medals and badges from, most of them are from my ancestors when they fought in the war. So World War I, World War II, and the Korean War. But I have two things. I have two things from dead Nazi soldiers. Okay, so I'll show you those things. And I'll show you a few of the other American badges. So we have this badge. Ugh. It's so creepy. Like holding these makes me feel a little sick in my stomach. 
And I have this one. Ugh. Ugh. These two things, like, they don't really come out ever. Um. So, here's a, like, a pen. And then I have just a few different badges. So, I have a lot. <laughs> Not a few, a lot. There's another pin. I would like to one day have these looked at so it would tell me exactly where they're from, what war they're from, things like that. Yeah, let's get the Nazi stuff in here and away from my view. I feel like shaky. Me. So these are two letters that recently came into my possession. This is actually a letter and this is a poem and these are from my great great uncle's girlfriend that he met in France when he was in the war and they fell in love and they kept in touch. This is stationery that he gave her. It says Old Hickory. Straight bourbon whiskey, 100 proof bottled in, in bond, and 86 proof Old Hickory Distillers Company, Philadelphia, PA. That's how we, we know. Um, so I'll read them to you. It says, another happy year. This is the end of one more year of joy you've given me. Thank you so much, my darling, for each happy memory. Thank you for being kind and sweet and good in every way and for your close companionship through every night and day. Thank you, my darling. For the warmth and comfort of your smiles an ambulance i'm sorry and for your letters when we were apart by many miles i hope the new year will become the best you ever had and i will strive with all my heart to keep you always glad thank you my darling for the fact you always have been true god grant the year ahead will bring more happiness to you love i think it's a Tina, but it could be Tink. I'm not sure. For you alone, only you can make the sun shine even on a cloudy day. You alone possess the power to make every sad thing gay. It's as though you were enchanted by a queen with laughing eyes. For a smile from you, my darling, causes faith and hope to rise. You alone control my reasons. Without you, I'm all at sea, like a ship without a harbor. A lock without a key when the weights of trouble hold me in a vise of deep despair your soft words of understanding lift the burden of my care so i love you i want you i need you how sweet i love these i'm actually planning on having them displayed love them this is a charcoal drawing of my great great grandparents on their wedding day one of my favorite items it's really cool and wonderful condition and i would say they got married somewhere around the late 1800s so it's definitely from around that time period and i just think it's a really cool piece to have we have this which i think may have come from yeah this definitely came so this came from the store my ancestors used to own, and it is a bottle opener, or it came from the hotel, either one. They owned a hotel, um, and it came from Virginia. It is a Coca-Cola bottle opener, and I've seen these like all over. This is from 1925, and I just think that is pretty darn cool. I have this little dictionary. How cool is this? So tiny, so awesome. I'm surprised I'm not running on battery right now. It's a Webster dictionary. I have a plethora of coins, so I'm not going to show you them all. I'll show you like the cooler stuff, I guess. So we have this. I don't know which ancestor. This came off of. 
but it's one of my ancestors from the war. And there are coins in here. These coins feel like fake play money, like literally feel like kids money. And I'm not sure what coins they are. Oh, there's a Frank. Okay. Okay, well that's helpful because some of them, you know, are a little harder to view than others, but there's like a bunch. There's a lot in here. Um, but it's so weird because these really do feel like the play money you would get from like Dollar Tree. Uh, let me get it all out. I don't want to like, drop it. Did I get it all out? No, there's like one more. Really, what's one more going to do, right? But <laughs> let me get it out. I mean, I have tons of coins, but obviously those are the coolest coins. And then, um, I'll show you these, which are pretty cool. I have a bunch of these. Okay, so this is Dr. Drake's The Children's Cough Remedy for Children's Crappy Cough. A bunch of these. This whole bag is coins. Coins galore. And then there's a lot from different countries, from different wars. So that's pretty cool. We're nearing the end here. So this thing I was <sighs> this thing I was actually debating selling. But I think I might give it to my sister. This is a cutting board. If my sister wants it anyway. Um poster, a tiny kitchen set, there's a cleaver, like, and this is actually sharp, um, pretty interesting, huh? This is actually something you can find on my shop right now, it is a collection of three vintage cookbooks, they all come together, I think they're like 10 bucks on my shop. Oh my goodness, so speaking of vintage Halloween things, I have this old knickknack from Spain's. It's from Spain's was a store. So this is from the 90s. So it's not, this is actually relatively not very old. This is Mayan that I've kept. I just, I think this is so cute. And then this one is actually being sold on my shop. This one's Mayan. This one is being sold on my shop. It's a little skeleton. It says, I am dead. This is an old lipstick from the 40s. This is the box that it came in. This was, um, I think it's Henry Rosenfield. Yep, Henry Rosenfield. The color was Fright Flare. This was the little bottle. Isn't that cute? It's really cute. And then I actually sold a lipstick from the 60s. This does not swivel up, unfortunately, but... This is from the 40s. Okay, so this one is really cool, and unfortunately, it's so tiny and so old that you're not going to see the detail very well. This is from Wisconsin, and I should I did a trigger object because there's actually some paranormal stuff that I, come, that I came across from this. Um, this was really old. I can't remember the date. It was made in Germany little box but then when you open it up there's Jesus inside and I did a trigger object investigation that I will link like a while ago and I had some interesting results I think I'm gonna do an updated one with like my updated technology so I actually have this I don't want to like show too much but this vintage box and in here is um mystery bunch of mystery vintage items. This is on my shop. There is 
I don't even know. Like, it might be like 11 to 13 items in here. I can't remember. And there's some vintage toy items in here. Alright, okay, so we're getting down to the nitty gritty. These are some pictures I'm selling on my shop. I do have pictures of my ancestors that are pretty old, but I'm not going to show them in this video because I really have to take those out. But I have some cabinet cards like the ones I'm going to show you. You can find these on my shop right now. Um, this is a card of a baby. This is a tin one. And then these two are cabinet cards. So, I mean, like, look at how cute this old man was. He just, I don't know. He looks like a grandpa to me. I don't know. I like him. And then I have this one. And so these three you would get together for like fifteen dollars i think it is so this is actually a picture of an ancestor i'm not sure who it is though it is a woman and she has a baby and this picture is really old and it's going to be really hard to see on camera but she's holding a baby right here so i have a tie clip a ford tie clip and this will be on my shop as well i have another bracelet this is all coins these are like six pence and things like that. This gold filled um, necklace. It's a pretty necklace. It's going to be listed in a shop as well. This is from, I think, the 60s. I have just a gold cross. Again, around the same era. This will be listed. This is a costume jewelry cross, but this is pretty old and this is going to be listed as well. This one's pretty. that you can see because it's not gonna it's not gonna focus this is something so silly and i actually gave, wanted to give this to my nephews and because they loved it but my husband's family insisted that it could be worth something one day i'm like it's never gonna be worth anything it's talking teeth they loved it i think that they should have kept it so yeah. they chatter when you set them on the floor they chatter better but There's the key back here, and you would like wind it up. Um, so then I have a few pocket watches. I have three. So we have this one, which is pretty heavy. And I have this one. I love a pocket watch too. It's, it reminds me of the gift of Magi, which I loved. And this one is my favorite. So this one should have a, a covering here which unfortunately when i got it it didn't but it it's so pretty so it's rose gold and there's this pretty detailing on here you can't really see it when you open it up there's engraving and it says cora lynch so this belonged to my grandfather's grandmother before she got married. Lunch is her maiden name, so I think that's pretty cool. So those are all the antiques I want to show you. I do have a few more, like I had said, but these are the ones that was more accessible for me to get out. Some of these are for sale in my shop. Some of these I've inherited, and some of these I came across on my own. So, lazy, stop licking. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your favorite antique that I have was. And let me know what your favorite antique that you have at home is.